rowing. Hello modern quilters. I'm going to teach you a little bit about foundation piecing. We're using the book Vintage Quilt Revival. It's on page 44 for the project that we're doing. You'll be printing off your pattern from the CD that's located in the back of the book. We'll be using the Mayflower block template, which is this template right here. And the paper that I used is Carol Doak's foundation paper. This is paper that you can run through your printer, your copier at home, or even laser printers. It's fabulous for foundation piecing. It's very lightweight, it's not slippery, and it's absorbent so you don't have extra ink. So we're gonna be printing our paper pattern right on this paper, and we're gonna start sewing. So in the directions that has you cut the finished block, by the way, will look like this. So it's made up of four blocks, one, two, three, four, and here is one block right here. So we're gonna be creating four of these blocks. All right, so when you have your paper, you're actually going to be sewing on the opposite side, the one with the lines, and you're gonna be laying your fabric on this side. So in order to see where your lines are, you can use a light box or you can punch the pattern with your needle without thread and you'll be able to see a pattern punched in the paper. You can then label your patterns. They'll be one, two, three, and four. So you can see on this piece, I have one, two, three, and four and that's what's over here. So this is one, two, three, and four. Now where our pink fabric or our solid fabric is going to go is it needs to cover this entire area. If you're looking at our finished block, you'll see that that's where the pink needs to live. So this is our sewing line. Our fabric needs to cover the sewing line by at least a quarter of an inch. So you're going to flip your fabric back and peek and make sure that you're covering those areas by at least a quarter of an inch. Your fabric should always be cut larger and the directions do give you larger sizes. Now the cream fabrics are gonna go in the corners and you will do the same. You will lay it right sides together and you want to audition this and make sure it's going to cover this seam line and then you can pinch it so that when you flip this fabric right side out, it will also be covering that stitching line. So a completed block, once it is sewn for the first line, would look like this. This is still the pink fabric, just a different print. And when you flip this over, it will need to cover your stitching line, which is on the reverse. I don't have this pattern punched. The next step is you'll want to use an add a quarter ruler and you'll want to trim this stitching line. Now, when I went to go to sew this, I actually was sewing on the reverse side. So when you flip this over, you'll be sewing directly on the line so you are not guessing about where to sew. What, although is not very accurate, is necessarily how you have laid your fabric. So it may not be a perfect quarter inch, and that's why we'll use an add a quarter ruler. Okay, so you're gonna flip this over, and you're going to pull the paper back and expose just the fabric. The add a quarter ruler has a small lip. It's difficult to see, but on one side you have a small lip that is a quarter of an inch wide, and you're gonna lay that lip so that it butts up against your seam. So if you can see this kind of stopping, that's where that quarter of an inch is. And then you will use your rotary cutter to trim it to a quarter of an inch. So it sort of gets butted up against that folded piece of paper? Exactly, Natalie, right up against the piece of paper. Oh. All right, so then you're going to press your fabric. So I will flip this over and press my fabric. There's several tools. Obviously you can use an iron, but there's a wonderful little gadget called a little wooden iron. 
and it has a flat edge and you'll use the little wooden iron to press this seam to make it lay flat. So this reduces the amount of time you're up and down to the ironing board and it makes that seam lay nice and flat. Now, when I were to sew the next piece of this on, it would actually lay right here and right here when it's finished. And when I sew all of those on, I'll flip it over and trim it down. So can we go back one step? Can you flip that over? Yep. I have the fabric in the wrong spot here. And place your second cream. Yep. <laughs> All right, so my next cream is gonna need to cover this area right here. So I need to flip this over, remembering that my next cream needs to be in this area here. If I lay this right sides together, and audition it by flipping it over and making sure I cover my seams, I'll know that that is going to be a complete area. Then the next one would be sewn like this, sew and flip. Then you'll have a wonky block. In between each seam, you will use that add a quarter ruler to butt it up against that fabric and pull the paper away to trim this down to a quarter of an inch. This will reduce bulk. Once you've done that on each step, you'll have a piece that looks like this. And when you trim it down, it will get trimmed to this last outer edge. This dotted edge is your quarter inch stitching line for your finished block. You will make four of these blocks, sew them together so that you have an X pattern. Didn't we have an extra pattern too? Yes, it is a cute little pouch. It's called the vintage, um, sorry. 44, page 44. Page 44. And it's an adorable little pouch. It's called the New World Pouch. We'll send a picture of the completed project with this video. And this is a great way to practice your paper piecing. They're very small blocks. These little blocks are one and three quarter. They're absolutely adorable. So if you want to perfect paper piecing, make this adorable pouch. Hope you're inspired. Thank you for joining us for Modern Quilt Sampler. And good luck with foundation piecing.